what is a square wave? A square wave is really a sine wave, and then you add a third harmonic. So if you have 48 kilohertz, let's say, make it simple, 10 kilohertz clock. You have a 10 kilohertz fundamental sine wave, then you have a third harmonic of 30 kilohertz, and it's three cycles, and then a fifth harmonic, and a seventh, and a ninth, and all the odd harmonics add up and make it square, mm -hmm. right? So a square wave is composed of thousands of sine waves, right? So that means a square wave contains very, very high frequencies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 48 kilohertz is not a low frequency. It contains megahertz frequencies. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> back in the uh, 90s, early 2000s, even 10 years ago, uh -huh. um, converters were not good enough that it mattered, but now converters are so good, all converters, Prism, Apogee, is converters, they're so good that the clock needs to be 10 times better yeah. than it mm. used to be, mm. right? So um, jitter is when, when the clock goes up, that's when the sample is taken. Then you go through the cycle, and then the next up. Right, sample number two and sample number three. The time between sample one and sample two has to be exactly equal to the time between sample two and sample three. Mm -hmm. So if if at forty eight kilohertz, this time is one divided by forty eight thousand seconds long, and then so this is that plus some small um, nanoseconds or picoseconds. Yeah picoseconds is 10 to the minus 12, so uh, a trillionth of a second. Um, we can hear uh, artifacts in the audio if it's only a few picoseconds of jitter. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, I'm just saying jitter is very, very important. How do we control jitter? Uh, it's the transmission from the clock to the converter. So let's say you buy uh, an atomic clock, yeah. $10,000, right? <laughs> you have atomic clock, and then you have a prism converter. And if you connect the two together with a BNC cable, mm -hmm. yeah. right, mm -hmm. that's bad. That's, <laughs> that's really bad because uh, a BNC cable is single-ended, unbalanced uh, signal. A, well, why is a microphone cable balanced differential? Because it's a very delicate signal, and you need to, um, you know, all all electric circuits have a send and a return, right? So the signal goes out and comes back. Mm -hmm. You can't just have a signal go out mm -hmm. with no return, right? Mm -hmm. So with a microphone cable, you have a hot or a plus and a minus, and then the shield doesn't carry any signal, right? Mm -hmm. The shield ties to ground at one end, so there's no ground loop, and then the signal is protected. But in a word clock, BNC, this, this, it's got one conductor, and then the signal returns on the shield, mm -hmm. right? So any noise from fluorescent lights, from cell phones, radio stations coming through the air, impose on the shield which ha carries the return signal. And the word clock is no longer square. It's got little yeah. noise, right? Now I can have a perfect atomic clock, perfect, mm -hmm. low jitter, zero jitter, and a perfect converter, right? And But now my word clock cable has, it will pre-trigger or post-trigger early or late. So mm -hmm. you're going to get jitter. Right? Yeah. The only way to get rid of jitter in your connection is with a balanced signal. So it's better to use AES two channel as a clock mm -hmm. rather than word clock because AES is a balanced signal. Mm -hmm. Right? And inside radar, all of our clock lines are double balanced. They're um, all shielded with impedance matching as well. Um, 
impedance matching means that if you have a 75 ohm cable, mm -hmm. 75 ohm mm -hmm. impedance, and then you have a connector, and you go to the store and buy a connector, and it says 75 ohms, right? Mm -hmm. You solder the connector to the cable. There may not be, there may be an impedance mismatch between the cable and the connector, right? Um, because this is a cheap connector that's maybe it's 75.1 ohms yeah. and the cable is 74.9 ohms they're not exact so electricity sees an impedance mismatch as a discontinuity so if you take two water pipes and solder them together and there's a very small uh, burr or edge inside the pipe the water flows and hits the edge, there's turbulence. Mm -hmm. And then the turbulence causes reflected waves to go back up the pipe, yeah. right? The same with electricity. Uh, if, if there's an impedance mismatch, then you get reflected waves mm -hmm. in the electric current. The reflected waves cause noise, and the noise causes jitter. So you have to have balanced clocks, but also impedance matched all the way through from the clock source so if you open up a radar and you look at the boards interconnecting they're all balanced and shielded with impedance matching we have forty thousand dollar software that uh, when we lay out do the circuit layout of the boards we know that it's impedance matched all the way through properly matched we model it and make sure it's perfect so Power supply, clock, notice I haven't even talked about the converter chips. Like, mm. people say, what converter chip do you use? Like, AKM or analog devices or Texas Instruments, you know, they make converter chips. So if you look at a Avid HDIO, it uses an AKM 5394, right? That's what the Avid HDIO uses. Mm -hmm. That converter chip is not the sound quality. The sound quality is the power supply, the clock jitter, and the op amps on the front end. That's the sound quality. Mostly in the and, analog. And, and then the last two. The. Uh, Super when tele. you take a, um, a microphone, a, a line level signal, mm. and you go, it's a balanced signal. Mm. You have to have some uh, filtering mm. and coupling, DC coupling capacitors. Mm -hmm. So all mixing consoles have. Um, DC blocking caps that sometimes have to be replaced if they get swollen um, and you have op operational amplifiers they're called okay. or op mm -hmm. amps right? Mm -hmm. and the op amps have to be high slew rate mm -hmm. and slew rate is if I have a kick drum boom the signal rises very quickly right so the operational amplifier must track the transient so it's how if if the if the transient goes like this, but the op amp is can't track it, you that's know, distortion, you know, yeah. right? So you have to have you can't put in cheap op amps. You can't. <laughs> um, they've got to be good amp op amps with high slew rate. Um, a, cu a customer last week asked me um, about a certain converter, um, and I said, well, you know, it was, I think it was a. I forget what what the model was, but it, it was a it was sixteen channel converter, and I said, well, how much does it cost? You told me the cost, and um, <clears throat> the manufacturing raw parts cost to retail price is about five, okay, to include distributor, dealer, um, uh, labor, overhead, R and D, to pay all of those expenses and make money you need a five times markup so if a converter costs uh, five thousand dollars then it could have a raw parts cost of a thousand dollars right so he told me the retail price of this was like you know a thousand bucks for this 16 channel converter <laughs> and so I said well divide that by five so that's two hundred dollars now divide two hundred dollars by sixteen channels and then divide that by two again and it was like $2 in parts <laughs> per channel. 
<laughs> uh, the op amp alone, just the op amp is like five dollars, right? So you got an op amp for five dollars for one channel, and then the coupling capacitors, high quality coupling capacitors, etc. So I went through the whole thing, and he was like, "Yeah, that's right. How can you make it sound good for that low money, right?" But anyway, we we've got you know, for example, our converters. You saw on the back, uh, an eight cha one eight channel card is fourteen ninety five, so eight channels for fifteen hundred dollars. So you know, that's you know, the price per channel of our converter. What's that? That's um, that's that's like almost two hundred dollars a channel, or one hundred eighty dollars a channel. Um, in in and out. I want to. <laughs> now you you guys have our converters. Yeah. Um, you have the Ada two, and that's the exact. Is it Nyquist or which one? Classic. Classic ninety six. Yeah. Okay. So we have Chicken two. And and mm -hmm. We have two converter designs. We have the Ultra Nyquist is our top top end converter, um, and it's nineteen ninety five. So it's two thousand dollars for an eight channel module. Um, and then the classic ninety six is um, fourteen ninety five, fifteen hundred euros uh, for uh, for classic ninety six. Um, and we originally had in the radar two Otari radar two. We had. Do you remember the Otari radar? El anterior. El anterior modelo. Yeah, they were yeah. our distributor yeah. till two thousand. Um, <coughs> We had the classic converters. They're only 48 kilohertz, uh, but a lot of people liked them because they had that big bottom end and the sound. warm sound. Um, and so we extended the sample rate range to 96 kilohertz, um, and that's what the classic 96 is. That's what you have. But I mean, mm -hmm. what do you tell them? What your experience with the sound is? Yes, I told. I told. Yeah. Sí, que suena. De verdad, suena como si no se estuvieses grabando, o sea, como si fuese el instrumento de verdad, la voz de verdad, o algo, es, es, es alucinante. Es que no oyes la conversión, no... Es, es muy, sí. muy, muy natural y muy limpio, muy, es, es la leche, de luego. Habla antes de algo del Headroom, ¿no? De, sí, de... que tienen, tienen un poco más de Headroom, además, que los Apple y los, y los Prince Ajá. ¿no? Sí, no, para grabar, pero es que para insertar aparatos en la mezcla es que no pierdes nada. Y para mastering yeah, yeah. lo pones en un inserto y no estás perdiendo nada. Es como transparente. ¿eh? So, I like it very much. Yeah. <laughs> very, very much. <laughs> Good. Any other questions? What about picking in, in this... In this commercial that's picking while, while recording or mixing, if yeah. you see a red light, it's very yeah. dangerous or, or uh, it our, has... Our converters, um, we clip, we show clip one bit 